And that's what I'm going to teach you about tonight. The, the, the goal that we're trying to reach is to become a friend of God. I want God to say, Reggie's my friend. I don't just want to be saved. I want God to say, I talk to Reggie the way I talk to Moses as a friend. You know, God talks to you differently when you're his friend. Did you know you can be saved and have friendship issues with God? We're gonna, I'm going to give you the scriptures on that today. You can be saved and still have friendship. You got to get yourself to the place where you want to please God. And not only do we want to please God, we want to do what please him the most. I want God to smile when he says my name. I want God to be happy when people bring Reggie up. Remember when, the, when, the, when God actually bragged on Job. Have you considered my servant Job? That, that, that guy's cool with me. I know what Job is going to do. Would you, I don't want God saying, well, you know, uh, skip Reggie's house tomorrow because he, he, Reggie might do anything. He, he, uh, you, you break some temptation or you, you rub his back the wrong way. You might get told over on Reggie's block. I want God to say I can trust Reggie. I can trust him to have the testimony when he get back to church and says, yes, things may not have went my way, but I did what was best for God. I did what was best for the kingdom. Yes, I wasn't happy all week, but I did what was best for the kingdom. And when you can say that and when God can say that about you, you place a smile on God's face. It, it, it was um, before we get started. You have an extra sheet or sheet for me. Oh, I was like, oh, teacher doesn't even have a sheet. Where do we get started at? Thank you so much. Before we get started, I, 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 I was telling you that um, my goal is to get you prepared for spiritual warfare. Now, in the process, there's a lot of things that I wanted to teach, but um, there are things that are more important right now. I mean, I wanted to teach, the, you know, um, a new season, and I wanted to teach you about um, from the pit to the palace. But because you're going to go, I can guarantee you that the Holy Ghost, I speak by the authority of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have spiritual warfare. And, and count it all joy in your tribulations. Count it all joy in, you know, you, uh, when you go through things because you're going through things for the sake of Christ. He's called you into holiness with purpose. He's called you into ministry with purpose. He didn't call you just because he put that desire in your heart. The Bible says if a man or woman desire the office of a bishop, they desire a great work. We're not talking about bishop. Mallet in the Pentecostal assembly. Bishop in the Bible is a mature minister. If a man or woman desires to be a mature minister in God, they, they desire a great work and work to, to get yourself to that. And I see things around here. I see people that uh, for whatever reason, maybe we in the ministry let you down or maybe we didn't fully uh, release you, anoint you, because your anointing is going to come through your pastor and, and your pastors and, and your ministers, those that God has called. It, it got, your release comes through that. Now, it can, let me say that over again. Your anointing comes from God, but your release comes from your leaders. And, and, and we're called to take you to another level. And I know before my job is finished here, and I've said it all alone, it's gotten to the place where I came with one idea, but uh, I got another idea in my mind. Before my assignment is over, somebody's going to be released. Now, I don't know if my assignment is two more months or two more years, but I have enjoyed what God has done with me and what God is showing me here. And I don't know if it's 20 more years, or you know, but, but I see things. I see treasure chests that God has given me combinations to open up. I look out in the audience. You may just see people. I see bishops. I see pastors in this audience right now. And, and once again, let's get off of, well, he want me to get up there and preach. No, I'm not saying that. Some of you don't realize that you pastor some folks in your Sunday school class. You know, you, you're leading them. You're shepherding them. And, 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 and I see people with the ability to help other people be saved. In this room, I see people with the ability to unlock some things in other people's lives. And you didn't realize that. And I'm not blaming you. But you can blame me if I leave here and don't give you the combination that God has given me. So I look out here and I see treasure chests that God is saying, they're not that close to, they're not that far away from opening that treasure chest. There's one more turn to the right, three more times. And so that's why I take certain lessons a little more serious because there's some things I need to tell you and there's some things that you need to understand. It's not just, and when we preach, I've gotten so sick of watching televangelists that preach about faith and it's all about getting a $50 bill. 
you know, I'm going to tell you something. I was sitting at home when I first got saved, and uh, I've already told you the Benny Hinn story, but I'm, now this one didn't turn out so good. And, and I'm, I'm watching a, a program. The man says, I need, God is telling me for 30 people to send $300, and they're going to get thousands. And I was sitting there. He's talking to me, Janet. Janet's like, he's not talking to you. Give me the checkbook, Jesse. He's not talking to you. Give me the check. But what makes it so bad about it is, so I go to church. You know how? You got to know the voice of God. Because if you don't know the voice of God, the devil will jack your life up. We go to church. There's a revival going on. We're at Christ Temple. And I'm not going to call any names, but it was a pastor, bishop, big time bishop. He came in town. He was wearing a yellow robe with a cape. Looked like Batman in the yellow. He got up and he preached. And I'm sitting there. And he said the same thing. God is telling me 10 people had $300 to give. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's talking to me. Janet was sitting on the side. She started calming me down again. He's not talking to you. Give me back my checkbook. I had her checkbook. <laughs> she said, but I, 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 you know, I put the old man thing. I'm the man of the house. I hate I did that that day. I'm the man of the house. Give me that checkbook. I wrote a check for $300. They told us that we were going to get our money back in seven days. $3,000. Seven days went by. We were still getting food stamps. Ten days went by. Twenty days went by. Well, I, we weren't getting food stamps, but we were on student aid at the time. But, but, but we were getting assistance to go to school. To make a long story short, two or three years went by. And then the devil had the nerve to try to get me mad with God. God didn't forget about you. God never told you that. You got to hear the voice of God. I don't care who's preaching it. You got to know the voice of God. And this was a very prominent preacher in, in our organization, in the Pentecostal group. And, and, and he said that God told him 10 people was going to get $3,000 in seven days. And uh, we laugh about that this day. I have to apologize. Here it is, 30-some years later, and I have to apologize to Janet over and over about that. You know, I don't know what I was thinking, but, but I learned something. If you don't know the voice of God, you can have some shipwreck. Now, let me tell you this. I told you this a, a few weeks ago when I first got here. The most important thing you would do for the rest of your life is identify the voice of God. The second most important thing is how you respond to the voice of God. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't know the voice of God, you're lost. It doesn't matter how good looking you are. If you don't know how to respond to the voice of God, you're in trouble. So whatever you're doing, stop and find out how do I respond to the voice of God. But first of all, let me know the voice of God. Everybody talking about heaven is not going there. Now, I'm not saying the bishop's not the, the person that preached it. I'm just saying that obviously that wasn't the word for me that night. Because he said in seven days I was going to get $3,000 and I didn't. I didn't get it. In, you know, it took years for me to get thousands of dollars. I had to finish school and all that. But but the thing about it is people will come and tell you God said or God didn't say it. They'll get you in trouble. So when you leave here tonight, that's why I print out study what the preacher taught. I don't care who it is. Bishop Mallet, Bishop Jones study. Is it in the word? If it ain't in the word. Let me say that right. If it's not in the word. It may not be God. If it's in the word, then it is God. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. And remember I told you, God's word is synonymous with God's works. Oh, get this. God's word is equal to God's work. Wherever you have God's word, you have God's work. If God said it, it is. If God didn't say it, it may not be. If God said it, it is. If God didn't say it, it may not be. So we got to know God's word. Why it was so important for me to tell you that is as you go into spiritual warfare, as the devil tries to attack you, if you're prepared to win, you will win. God's word will never lose. If you're prepared to, the only way you can lose as a saint is not be prepared to win. If you have the word of God, you will always win. May not turn out the way you thought it would be, but you're always a winner if you have God's word. God's word is the most important thing that you'll ever read. 
if it's God's word, it is. And I say this, and this gets a little spooky, but I've learned this in my prophetic ministry. The only thing that gives me the right to speak some things, like I told you, I uh, called one guy who had just got out of jail and he came to our church and I told him he was going to be a pastor and a lot of the deacons and associate pastors, assistant pastors, they thought that um, I shouldn't have said that because, but I saw something. Now what I had to learn, I had to improve myself. I had to learn to, as a pastor, don't, it's not always time to speak what you see because some people can't understand the vision. You got to make it plain. But the it, make a long story short, the guy who I said was a pastor, he's a pastor today. Uh, he is a pastor. He, he, he did his time and he, and he um, learned and came to Bible class and grew in the ministry and became exactly what I saw on him. Now, uh, when I see things on you, I pretty much know that the devil's going to fight you. Now, I knew that the devil was going to fight him with the ministry and different things would go in. And, and, and I don't know how many times he disagreed with me and got mad, wanted to leave the church because you know why? Because God had called me to mentor him. If the devil could mess that up, the devil was trying to mess his future up. He hung in there. He hung in there. And I hung in there because he kind of got under my skin. But, but the thing about it is we knew that there was a call on his life. If I tell you that I see healing in your life, and I, and I tell you God told me, you better believe you can take it to the bank because I'm not going to say it unless God tells me to say it. I have learned not to go by Pastor Mellis' wishes and Pastor Mellis' desires. I have learned if, you, if we speak what God says, what God says, it is. Now, as I said, what has gotten me in trouble is a lot of people don't realize that if it is the word of God, it is. If God, let me give an example. Do you not know that God is already walking around in your tomorrow? We're trying to figure out how long the service is going to last tonight. There is no barrier on God. God is not in any parentheses, any category. God is outside of the circle. He's already walking around in your tomorrow. He's in your next week. So if he speaks, he sees that John is rich tomorrow. When I say rich, naturally, financially secure. The prophet has the right to say, the Bible says, let the weak say that I'm strong. Let the poor say that I'm rich. He's talking to specific people. If God is going to touch you, so the preacher gets up sometime and he speaks. He says, you are healed or you are okay. You're sitting there and you don't feel okay. But the word of God says you're okay. What do you do? We walk by faith. You have the right to say by faith, I'm okay. And by faith. And I was going through some problems, as I told you, uh, before I recommitted my life. As a kid, I thought I had been around the church all my life. And when I got older and went to school, I got involved in some things. And it was only two two to three years that I was involved in this stuff and it was bad. It wasn't good. Somebody, you know, I went to church and somebody talked me into testing some stuff out. A church person talked me into testing some stuff out and I got him on. Here I am, and I had never smoked a cigarette, never drink, and a church person, boy, that's what you got to know. You got to know who was it. You got to know God for yourself. There's some church folk could take you to hell. Did you know that? Trying to go to hell out of the church. But um, I went to church and, and the church person invited me to a party. Couldn't be so bad because they, they half saved. There's nothing else. You're either in or you're out. There's no half saved in this thing. You're either in or you're out. You're either saved or you're unsaved. You're either righteous or you're unrighteous. Well, he was almost righteous. Yeah, he was on his way to hell. Hell is, the road to hell is paved with people that are almost righteous. Somebody took me to a party, and they said, try this thing out. And, and, I, and I don't even like testifying about myself because I'm so ashamed of things I got into when I was younger. But I have to tell it because if you think the preacher is so self-righteous, he's up here and he was, no, 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 no. God brought me, God got me out. The only reason I'm preaching, because I found out 
he can bring you out. I would have never known that if I didn't go through some things that I've gone through. And and, and person got me connected to some stuff. And I actually went two years of my life in addictions. And uh, I thank God that it wasn't anymore, but addiction is no good to be in whether it's two years or 20 years. It steals your victory. It destroys your family. It takes your future, the vision on your life, the purpose of your life. And, and I thank God we were uh, in marriage counseling. Jen and I had just got married, and, 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 the, and the counselor, i never forget that, was asking her, you know, do you want to stay with this guy, <laughs> this fella? And i never forget what Janet was saying, that there's a purpose on his life. There's a purpose, on, and if there's a purpose on his life, then there's a purpose on our life. God let us get married. And, and, and I remember that, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll go and tell the story. As much as I didn't want to tell it, I'll tell it. You know, I feel so ashamed to even tell the story in front of kids that I start smoking drugs. And I was, you know, young, young and, and got caught up with that. And when you get caught in addictions, you may want to, that's why I teach addictions class, you may want to stop. Don't try something that'll control you. I, I tell the young people, don't let no kid in school tell you to try or test something, and then your whole life is messed up. And I would come home and I would promise my wife that I'm not going to do it anymore. And the next day that things start, put, it's like a spirit. It start to pull on you. And you're back doing the thing that you promised the family you weren't going to do. And the reason I said that, because what I had to do in order to get out of that thing, and I've testified about how the Lord brought me to Christ's temple and Janet asked me to go to church with it. And at this time, I had opened a business and started making money. And so that, you know, that made the addictions worse the last year of it because, you know, Lord, just it was an economic anointing that I'm going to teach you all about on me to where I was touch business and and we just became rich overnight. And honestly, not selling drugs, just, you know, I, Lord blessed me to open up a shell station. I bought a shell station. They came after me and said, that we just like your attitude. Shell Oil recruited me. We're going to give you two shell stations in the minority neighborhood in the city. Then I opened up a grocery store. Then I opened up a record label, started producing gospel music. And so I had a lot of money. And so that made sin even worse because now I can afford drugs. And things are going so fast in my life as a young man I don't even know why, about 24 years old now, and I don't even know why I'm making all this money. I didn't realize that there's an economic anointing that was on me. God, you know, like they say, the Midas touch, you touch business, you know, we, things were just, it was being thrown at me. And I had to start telling myself, you know, Janice told me to just speak by faith, and I thank God that I had a saved wife. That just, you know, I mean, that makes a big difference, somebody praying for you. I thank God that somebody didn't give up on me because a lot of times the world, and, 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 and I don't blame a wife if they did walk out on the stuff I was doing. I, you know, I, I couldn't blame her, but I thank God that I had a saved wife that saw ministry over my life. And when I didn't see it, you know what Marvin Sepp says, when everybody else saw the worst in me, saw the best, God showed her the best in me. And so, but my, my point of the story was, I had to just walk by faith. I had to t get down on my knees and tell God, I'm not an addict. Even though crack cocaine was calling my name, figuratively speaking, you go to sleep, you're dreaming about it. You, you, you wake up, you're thinking about it. And it, it was shameful what the devil was doing to my life. But I give this testimony to show you how powerful God is. Not how bad I was, but how powerful God. I mean, the devil could have said, here's this person that was raised in the apostolic church. I'm going to ruin him because his grandmother was evangelist. His father was a deacon. Three generations. His great-grandmother was a faith healer. And, and now I got him on drugs. Where it was generational blessings, I'm going to make it a generational curse. I had to... Even before I recommitted my life back to God, I had to get down on my knees and start telling God that I'm no longer using drugs. Now, to some, that would have been a lie because every time I said that, 
the enemy, the faster I said it, the faster the enemy brought it to my mind that you, you, you want to get high. You can't take this place. You, you know, you go somewhere and have a drink. I mean, you're tired of people talking to you in any kind of way. I was running business. I had 100 people working for me, and, and it was always stress. And so, and it wasn't the, the kind that you watch in the movie where, you know, the, the, the stress of life builds and all that. It was the stress of running a business, trying to keep up with people, and, and things happen so fast. Life was phony. Nobody was really my friend. Everybody comes around when you got an extra dollar. Lose those dollars and see if you still got those friends. <laughs> so, so, so just that, that stress. But I had to get down by faith. I actually started telling the Lord in my prayer, I'm clean and I'm pleasing you. You say, put on the, she's signaling to me. Is that what you said? Put on the microphone. Thank you. Thank you for my help. She's like, you're missing something. I wonder what you were doing. But, 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 but um, I had to keep telling God. I'll turn this off. Let me turn this one off. I had to keep telling God that, and I had to speak by faith. And you've got to do that. You've got to speak by faith. If you want deliverance, you've got to start telling God, I'm delivered. And I told God that. Now, it, it, all the people that was hanging out with me, they're either dead or in jail, but I got delivered. I think the only reason I got delivered 20 some years ago and made it back to the church is because I chose to have some faith in God. And I teach that now. I teach everywhere I go. You can be delivered. You don't have, and it's not drugs. I'm not the only addiction that take people. You don't have to do the things that destroy your life. You don't have to accept anything less than what God has for you. You don't have to take down because the devil wants to control your life. Now, if the devil had to control my life and I didn't tell God, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be able to teach here at Faith of the Apostles Church. But because 20 some years ago, I chose to have faith in God. And God started me off with that. The spiritual warfare comes when you don't have the scriptures. The, the losing in the war is when you don't have the scriptures. Remember Matthew 4, when Jesus come out of the wilderness and uh, the devil began to deal with his mind. If you really the son of God, thought he was going to beat Jesus. He actually thought he was going to beat Jesus up. But remember what I told you, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6 and 12. It's not flesh. We're not wrestling against the end. We're wrestling with mental things. That's how the devil's trying to fight you. He tells Jesus, if you're really the son of God, turn those stones to bread because you've been in the wilderness 40 days. Anybody with common sense will be hungry. I'm hungry after four hours, less than 40 days. <laughs> Put a barbecue sandwich in my face after four, four, a half a day. And, you know, didn't, didn't, who was that in the Bible? Soul is birthright for a bowl of soup. He was hungry. You know, hunger makes you think. But you got to know the voice of God. You got to know the will of God. If you're going to win spiritual warfare, you have to know the word. You have to know his voice and you have to know who you are. What did Jesus do? Jesus, he knew who he was. But what did he, he turned around and said, but I know what you're saying. But the way I'm going to kick your tail is I'm going to tell you what's written. He said, it is written. The man shall not live by bread alone. I'm going to quote a scripture out of Deuteronomy because I know that's how you beat the devil. Tell the devil, it is written that I shall have victory. It is written that I can be healed and delivered. I don't care how it looks. Remember I told you, I didn't even, get, I'm going to come back to my thing, but take it home and read it. We'll get a little bit of it today. But remember I told you when I um, was uh, at New Wine Skin Ministries in Indianapolis and Bishop Byron Johnson, he was preaching and he came out and he started preaching that if you would just touch the hem of his garment, and that had a lot to do with the anointing oil. And I, we're going to get in that how the oil runs down the rabbi's garment and the hem of his garment was the greatest anointing because the most oil. Because back in that day, they didn't just take a little bit of oil and put it on your head. They poured the oil on you. They poured the horn full of oil. But, but, the, the, but, but, but um, the woman came through the crowd when Jesus was um, going to heal one of the ruler's daughters, was it Jairus or somebody going to the 12 year old girl that, that was sick and Jesus was headed to her house. What was ironic about that story is 
the year that the little girl got sick, well, the year that the little girl was born, 12 years ago, was the year that this lady's condition started. They said that the lady had a condition for 12 years. Now, I don't know the whole story of exactly why that was told like that, but it said, uh, here it is, Jesus is going to heal a 12-year-old girl, and there's this woman that an affliction started in her body 12 years ago. It says she spent all her money. She got to the place where she didn't have anything else. Sometimes God got to let you get there if you're going to use faith. Maybe that's why he let us get down to our knees and knock us down. Because now we got to pray. The Bible says she spent all her money on doctors and educated personnel that could answer the question to why she was going through what she was going through. But guess what? The Bible says that they couldn't do her any good because they didn't know how to stop the problem. Have you ever been to a, in a place, come on Holy Ghost, talk to us, where you can't stop the problem. The doctors can't stop the problem. God said, this is a good time for a miracle. What qualified the lady for the miracle? It was not her looks. It wasn't even her age. What qualified the lady for a miracle is that she had a problem. That's what qualified her to see God. It's not how much money I got in the bank, I got a problem. What qualifies me to preach is I had a problem. God can use you. And so the Bible says that she ran and touched the hem of his garment. She pressed through the crowd. And when she pressed through the crowd, she touched the hem of his garment because people had told her, this is the rabbi. We don't fully understand. He says he's the son of David. He's the son of God. We don't fully understand. Is he going to restore the kingdom of God here in Israel or is he just teaching? But we know he's different. We know he's a man of God. But all I know when he comes through, the blind eyes are open. All I know is when he comes through, everybody eats. If he comes to your wedding, he turns the wedding upside down. He turned the water into wine when we ran out. It's something about him. He cares about everything we do. We do. Excuse me. And, 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 and so she made it up in her mind. I can no longer go by the educational view, the intelligent thoughts, because I've been to an intelligent doctor. Obviously, he's been to school all these years to be a medical doctor. I spent all my money on them and uh, I didn't get any answer. And so, so, so she said, well, I'm to the point now that only thing I got and the only thing that's free and the only thing I can afford is faith. Oh, it's free to have faith in God. You don't have to buy a ticket. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have to get a, a yearly pass for faith in God. All you got to do is get some word. If he said it, it is. So Lord, tell me, are you saying that? Because if you're not, I won't ask you no more. So somebody told her you can be here. So she pressed the crowd. She reached out and touched him. And, and she really didn't want to be seen because in their custom, in the Jewish custom, at that thing going on in her life, she was not supposed to show herself face to face with men, and especially not the rabbi. So it was a certain amount of shame there. You know, I've been there. I've been to where I came in church and I was ashamed because my mama was a preacher, my grandmama was a preacher, my great grandmama. And here I am. I'm smoking drugs. I call people that kind of names in the street that did that. I called them crackhead or dopehead. Or, and I was no different than them. I had money in the bank but I was jacked up. And I knew Christ Temple, the mother church of the PAW, I knew that they were gonna look at me funny because they knew who I was. And they knew my family. And so it was so much shame, but I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't go by that. All I had was the word at that point. The word told me if any man Black, white, Chinese, Mexican. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So I can be new. Folks saw me downtown high and drunk. I can be new. Faith in God. It's got to start somewhere. Just have a little bit. Faith of a mustard seed. Because if you start, he'll pick it up and grow it. And... 
But I kept pressing like the lady. Now, the lady that touched the hem of his garment, she touched his garment and she was made whole. Jesus said, who is it that touched me? Who, I mean, somebody really wanted my attention. You ever been there? I'm not here just to sing the regular song. And I'm not here. Just, I, I, I want to have meaning to what I sing. I want to have meaning to what I preach. I want to have meaning to what I say. And I told you that story because when the preacher was preaching it at our church, matter of fact, he was the pastor that I came, recommitted myself. He was the pastor of Christ's temple. Then he, he left to start another church called New Wineskin Ministries, Bishop Byron Johnson. Janet and I chose to follow him at this time. I'm a minister and we followed him and helped him establish New Wineskin Ministries East. And he placed us to start New Wineskin Ministries. Well, he started New Wineskin Ministries West. We started New Wineskin Ministries East. So we actually, that's, that's where we come from. But this is what's so significant about this story. While he was preaching that, I was trying to figure out how does this affect me? Like you should do every time you're in church. God, what are you saying to me? I mean, I don't just want to be here to be here. I mean, and somebody else can say, man, I don't have to be there tonight. I could be watching the football game. I mean, that's not what I was thinking. And I hope none of you thinking like that. But if I'm here, I'm trying to figure out, well, how does this affect me? So I thought to myself, he's preaching about touch the hem of his garment. And I had a tumor in my back of my neck, in my throat. And I was just silly enough to think that I must jump up here and touch his robe while the preacher's preaching. And so I got up and I went and touched his robe. And at that point, a lot of people in church, because when I did that, the pastor turned around and said, he's getting what I'm preaching. He got the message because that's what the pastor, he was trying to get folks to either come up there for prayer or the day is your day. The day is your day. I'm sitting there. I think I really don't deserve it because I haven't been back here that long, although I'm in the ministry now, but I'm thinking I was really a rascal out there. And I'm just I'm just grateful that they let me back in the doors to tell the truth, you know. And so so I touched him of his garment. Now while I uh touched him, I went back to my seat. A lot of people got up and the church began to rejoice and all that. But I went to the back of my throat and it was still there. I went home and I opened my mouth and I saw the big old swollen part of the back of my throat and um so the devil says, well, nothing happened. You just made a fool of yourself. <laughs> and so, but, but guess what? Like in the book of Hebrews, they chose to believe even when it didn't look like it. Remember Abraham? Come on, just show it by faith. Remember God promised him a son, then God told him to turn around and sacrifice his son. Even when it don't look like what it is, God's word is synonymous with God. And even though I had a big old bump in my throat, I felt that God was telling me that I was healed. So I went to bed that night thanking God for healing me. When I woke up the next morning, it was gone. The tumor was gone. Never had to deal with it again. See, I wouldn't preach it. I wouldn't preach it if God didn't tell me to preach it. And I got the testimony to back it up. And if you, if you want to talk to Janet and question her after, she can give you some of these testimonies that we didn't know why we were going through all this stuff when we were younger. One thing, but now I know it was for this day. I was sitting at home. You wanted me to, pre you kept me all these years to preach at the faith of the Apostles Church. God's going to do something with somebody in here. I guarantee you. I would not say it if I didn't believe it. And I feel as convinced as to say this. If I'm wrong, I'll hang my keys up and leave. Take it by the authority of the Holy Ghost that when the, this, you will know that the prophet is real when God moves in your life. But now that I've told you that and you know that God's going to do something with you, I want to prepare you for how the shield, the fiery darts of the enemy. The enemy will come try to tell you it's not real. Right. Oh, it's not real. Before you leave, the enemy will start talking to you. Mm -hmm. He don't want you to get your reward. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your reward. God is talking to you. And this is what the, somebody's sitting here in the, the, in, and you hear this in your heart. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear, open it. I'll come in and I'll sup with you. Your life will never be the same. And I'm going to have to teach this over, but I'm going to get to the 
we don't have time to go through the scriptures, but the goal is to be a friend of God. The goal to this whole thing is not just to be saved. And I'll tell you quickly, there are, let's go to James 2.23. James, I'm, I'm trying to do a couple of these real quick and get you out of here in the next 10 to 12 minutes. Can we do it? Well, if y'all don't think so, I like to take my time. <laughs> but, but I kind of got an appointment with the slushy place in Kokomo, the, which is the smoothie place I go to every Wednesday. <laughs> Kal Kalam oh, I'm sorry, Kalamazoo. I didn't mean to misrepresent your city. Kalamazoo. I go there. So, so, but, but you know what? I would love to teach this all night, but I, I, I respect the people that I'm teaching, and we have plenty, we have more time together. I'm going to be here. We have more time. And God's going to open some doors that you did not think he was going to open. And, and, and let me say, because Sunday I got kind of excited. I thought, I'd, you know, I'm a little too old to be jumping up and jump. But this thing is messing me up. I am so excited. God is doing some things. And, and, and guess what? Don't you miss out. Don't you miss the train. Don't you miss out. Because I, I, if you see me talking with elders, district elder summoners a lot, I, I always quiz him while we're in the pulpit about Berry fireman. <laughs> I just love him. He, he, he's telling me things. And he said, you got to purge them and you, you got to pick in your season. If you miss your season, if the season come and go, you would not partake in the harvest. You would not. That doesn't mean that you won't be a farmer. You won't be a saint. You just won't get what was yours. It is yours this season. Get your bushel of berries. They're delicious. Get your bushel of fruit. It's delicious. God has it for you. What is it that God is going to do for you? What is it that God has put in your mind? Can I tell you a secret before I uh, go to the scripture? The Holy Ghost will introduce the thought to you. Wow, did you know that? Why did I start thinking that we need a new car? The Holy Ghost will let, that's, that's why you can, you, when James said, if you ask a miss, you're going to only ask what God draw you into asking. So don't be, don't feel shame or Guilty because we got a new Jeep. The Holy Ghost draws you into what's yours. Come on now. Don't feel ashamed because I got healed and and, and and other person didn't get hit. The Holy Ghost will draw you into what's yours. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. If you let me, oh y'all man, oh my God. If you let me in, you let me, let me get in where nobody else has gotten. Let me go where nobody else has gone. Open that door. Don't feel ashamed because you got a raise on the job. They didn't give the Mexican person or they've been discriminated. I can't worry about all that. I'm blessed. Well, they didn't, they, they, they didn't give this person or that person. I can't worry. I know what is yours is for you. What's mine is for me. And keep in mind, people, some of the things that you may think are outrageous, the Holy Ghost is putting it in your mind right now. Oh, you know, Sister Joyce, me and you might be holy dancing. She said, no, no, never say never. But I'm just teasing you, but I'm just saying, I'm trying to get you all to realize that we're getting ready to take a ride that normal people don't take. Now, I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. And I come to the conclusion, all those crazy things I went through, God preserved me for this day. I'm at the pinnacle of the ministry. I pastored 20 some years, outreach church, and we thought we were retiring. It was just time for us to get out of Indianapolis. God says, I have a stop on State Road 43 for you. State Road 40, what is it, 40 or 43? Because I don't want to go to the wrong address, end up at the gas station. I want to be at church. But God says, I have a place over there in a little town called Paul Paul. There's something I'm getting ready to do in that town. And you're blessed that you're part of it. I'm like, wow. How in the world? And, 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 and you're going to hear some testimonies that you're going to say, you know, Janet was telling me when we were in Detroit. I'm sorry, we were in Indianapolis last week. Janet said, Reggie, you got to take this newspaper article of you because you've testified about it, how I ended up on the front page of the Indianapolis Star. 
the ministry. I mean, just things that just don't happen to norm, normal people. You know, God has taken the ministry, just excel. And, 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 and what was it, our last copy? So I said, I'll go online and get it about how God uh, took the homeless ministry. Went from, we started the church with, what, th me, you, and Stephanie, three people. Within six months, we were at 300. And, and, and it, it, didn't, it didn't bother me to walk away from that because I know what God is doing. I know, you know, I like to see God work. But, but let's do the scripture. I'm going to do these couple of scriptures, then I'm going to let you go. Uh, the first one is James 2 and 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Okay, Abraham was a friend of God because he believed God. He believed what God said. When God says you're going to have a son, and Abraham, I think he started off, he was a 79 or 80 when he first started talking to him. At first, him and Sarah laughed. They thought it was kind of funny. You know, uh, they thought it was kind of funny that an 80 year old man could have a son. And, and, but, but God kept working with him. But at that point, he hadn't become the friend of God. He did not become the friend of God until he Believe. believed God. So you, so you can be saved and, 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 and not necessarily got to the friendship of that level yet. Exodus 33 and 11. Let's, let's read that. I think I can do this in about five. I got seven minutes. And she's going to ring. I'm going to ask the principal to ring the bell if I go overboard. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Wow. As a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. Okay, well, I just want to you can get to the place where God will speak to you like you're his friend. You know, and I'm not talking about the friends you got that, that really don't. You know, they're friendly as long as you're buying, as long as you're treating. Then, then once the treat stops, the friendship stops. Okay, the, uh, uh, the road to friendship is number one, and, and please go over these scriptures. Just, you'll see it first, I give the, the five items, but the next page give you the scriptures. Please go over the scriptures at home. The first, I want to be God's friend. First, get saved. Accept Christ and be born again. Number two, you become a babe. Number three, you become a disciple. Number four, you become a servant that leads into friendship. And I'll give you the scriptures real quick. The number one, well, you know what it is to be to accept Christ, to repent and accept Christ. And then uh, Hebrews 5 and 12 talk about the babe that can't eat meat, milk, the, the simple things of the world. You got to hear the things that make you realize you're in the right place. Num uh, number three, you got to become a disciple. And I know some people actually uh, debate me on this. Well, how do you become a disciple before you become a servant? Well, a disciple comes from the, uh, the Greek word. What's that Greek word again, Jeff? The Latin word, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Latin word. The Latin word of desir, desir, which means to learn. The only way you can become a disciple is willing to learn and learn how to take in what he's teaching you. He can disciple you. And then after you learn, you can grow and produce fruit. You can become a servant. You can take orders. A servant is to serve. You can't take orders if you don't know what the orders are, right? So you gotta be disciple first, you gotta learn. Okay, after you learn, you can take orders. And then uh, number five, John 15 and 15, uh, can you read that? I'm going to conclude there. John 15 and 15, because they get four and five. John 15 and 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what, what his Lord doeth. Okay, so the left disciple, now they're servants, and he says, now I'm not going to call you servants anymore because you understand what we're trying to do. And what did he say? But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. We want to be friends of God. I want you to study this over, and I might even talk about it a little more on Sunday. And I beg your pardon if it seemed a little redundant, but I do want everybody to get this, and you will soon realize why we went over some things over and over. It's very important 
because if we win the battle, we're going to win it together. I want you to care for each other. Pray for those that you don't see. Pray for Elder Hearn and Sister Michelle. Pray for the family members that you don't see. If you don't see them here, uh, pray for the one I'm claiming, Mindy. Uh, oh, family, we, we're going to make it. We, we, we're going to make it. Uh, um, and if you don't, uh, and even some of your family members are going to come back here, going to actually start going here. You're going to build a work for God. You are. And, 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 and this is your church. Take pride in that. These are your people. And some family members that you might have thought they would never come back here. Uh, uh, pray that God's will be done. Uh, um, and, 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 and just get prepared to do the will of God in whatever way. And don't do what God is not telling you to do, but do all that he says do. And God is going to do some great things. And I get you prepared to, to see the glory of God. And, 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 and I've been told, I conclude on this, I've been told about how over at Christ Temple, the one here in Indiana, that the Shekinah will come into church, the cloud, and they get to singing on a Sunday night or whatever. And, 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 and God's going to do some great things for you all. Get prepared. Get prepared to be closer with God. If you're here and you're touched by the ministry and you would like us to pray with you um, or pray for you, I want everybody to bow their heads as every eye closed because I, I, I don't believe in sharing everybody's information. And if you, I'm the only one with my eyes open now. If you... Um, would like me to pray, just raise your hand. We don't call no name. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Okay. And I pray for you. Okay. Father, I do thank you and I bless your holy name. Now, Father, I pray that you bless those that are taking heed to what you're teaching and opening up their hearts to receive what you're giving. Bless us, Lord. Bless us in our home. Bless our children. Bless our families. Have your way, dear Lord. Continue to empower this ministry. Have your way, Lord. And I welcome what you're doing. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.